Lieutenant Jim Fucci was a 20-year veteran of the Greenwich, Connecticut Police Department. Well-liked and well-respected. On the night of January 19, 1988, he and his fellow officers were called to the scene of an accident. We found an accident involving a flatbed tractor trailer truck and a small type vehicle. Uh, the small vehicle was pretty much underneath the flatbed portion of the truck. Uh, the situation was hazardous for both myself and the vehicles up there. Sergeant Pat Chilla was the first officer on the scene. There were vehicles passing me at a high rate of speed on both my right and my left. So we start setting up a flare pattern to protect the scene. Officer Gary Hanulik was helping to control the traffic. Headquarters notified me on the air to tell me to go qualify. We had our shooting program that was taking place. Veteran Lieutenant Jim Fucci arrived to take Officer Hanulik's place, laying down warning flares on the roadway. The non-injury accident had occurred on a three-lane stretch of highway, reducing traffic to one lane and speeds to under 10 miles an hour. I've known Jim Pucci for approximately 15 years. Uh, when I became a police officer, uh, we became friends, and we've been friends ever since. I left the scene and uh, proceeded up to headquarters. I knew of Jimmy as I was growing up in the town. Jimmy was one of the guys you kind of looked up to and wanted to be like. A police detective from the next town over, Dave Piero, was on his way back to headquarters. I was returning from Riverside, Connecticut in my department's unmarked detective car. And I was returning to the village of Portchester, New York. observed a vehicle and sharply veered in front of traffic towards the police cruiser. I had seen the impact and I saw the police cruiser being thrown. I got out of my car and saw that uh, there was a police officer in the trunk of the car. I looked into the trunk and I realized that he had lost his left leg. He was obviously in shock. His face was pale white. I began talking to the police officer, telling him that, you know, he's not going to die and that he is going to be okay. The words that he kept repeating really hit home. Here's a guy that I really admired, and he's asking me not to let him die. There was no doubt in our minds that if we didn't get Jimmy to the hospital quickly, that he wasn't going to make it. An urgent radio call about a cop down brought Officer Hanulik racing back to the scene, along with other officers in the area. I had no authority there. I just yelled out that we can't wait for this. We can't have a funeral in this trunk. Let's get this man out of here. We picked him up, laid him on the ground. I took off my belt, wrapped it quickly around to act as a tourniquet. The medic unit was not in sight at this time. So we made a decision to put him in the police car and take him to the hospital. The trooper at this point gave Officer Panza the box that had uh, the severed portion of the leg in it. When I saw that car driving away, I knew there there was only moments between life and death. I felt like someone had reached into my body and was pulling my heart out. Officer Paul O'Gorman had known Jim Pucci for more than 25 years. I remember Jimmy saying things about his family and that he didn't want to die. I just told him to hang in there and we'd have him at the hospital soon enough and uh, not to worry about anything. While Jim Pucci was being rushed the one and a half miles to the hospital, a member of the force was sent to notify his wife, Diana. My daughter said there was a police officer there to see me and I saw Chucky Smith and he just looked sad. 
and I knew something was wrong. He said that uh, Jimmy had been in an accident. Within five minutes, he arrived at the hospital, where a trauma team immediately went to work to try and save his life. Dr. Kevin Conboy was at the hospital that night for a meeting. Well, the initial assessment was that he had an amputation of the one leg, that he had had chest wounds with probable fractured ribs, which is impeding his respirations. He had a fracture of the uh, right arm. He was also having a tremendous amount of abdominal pain, which questioned whether there were internal injuries there at the time. Our major concern was the amount of blood loss. We had estimated initially that he probably had lost close to his total body volume. He showed tremendous fighting power, wanting to stay awake. He was aware of the degree of trauma to his body. The situation was extremely critical. He was aware of it. I remember saying, I don't care about his leg. What else is wrong? What's threatening him? Is he going to die? And they wouldn't answer me. We knew we had a long, stormy course ahead of us, not knowing what his lung status would be in the days to follow, what his kidney function would be in the days to follow. The surgeons were unable to reattach Jim Pucci's leg. They were not even sure he would survive. The doctors came in and they asked me how I was and if they thought I was able to talk to Jimmy. And I said, yes. So I, I did go in and I talked to him. I was just so nervous. I kept saying to myself, don't get hysterical. You can't get hysterical. I, I didn't go home. I spent almost two weeks sleeping at the hospital. I came home long enough to take a shower and go back in time to talk to the doctors. The nurses kept saying to me, you have to go home. You have to go home. And I said, I'll go home when you tell me my husband's going to live. When I got there, I was really scared, but I didn't cry when I walked in. I was really strong for my father, and I, f I could feel that he was being strong for us, too. Jim Pucci was hospitalized for eight weeks and underwent months of physical therapy to learn to walk with an artificial limb. I think one of the major factors that pulled me through this ordeal is my love of life. I've always loved life, and uh, I want to live life to its fullest. I knew that if he had enough strength to live through the accident, he would have enough strength to go back and do the things that he wanted to do. He wasn't going to let this ruin the rest of his life. He had too much pride to let that happen. Our family has always been close. I think that this accident has brought us a lot closer because we've had to learn to deal with some letdowns and help our father along the way. This is something that will uh, it'll be with me for forever. But uh, just thank God Jimmy's here with us. It was a long time there, and I, I didn't think uh, he was going to pull through. But uh, look at him today, and it's, it's, it's a miracle, it really is. The driver of the car that struck Lieutenant Pucci had been trying to get around the line of stopped cars. He was convicted of unsafe lane changing and fined $50. If anyone gets hero status out of this, it should be Jim Pucci, because here is a man who came back after losing a leg in a terrible accident, never once focusing on any disability that he had, only focusing on his abilities. One year after the accident, Jim Pucci returned to work on the police force part-time. I guess it's natural to say, why me? Why did it happen to me? But I'm so happy to be alive. I look at every day after that fateful night as a gift. <laughs> 